Viewer discretion is advised for this video. In this video, we will be showing real animal skulls and bones. If you do not wish to see or hear us discussing animal skulls or other parts relating to dead animals, please turn this video off. We have many other metal coating videos that could be of great use to you if you just wish to learn more about the metal coating process. This video is intended to give guidance to those wishing to learn how to use metal coatings on animal skulls. It is also important to note that these animals were found dead on private land. We did not harm any animals in order to make this video. We just collected them after nature played its role in the circle of life. Detailed in these videos are the steps we took. While there are many ways to prepare and clean the skulls, this was what worked for us. Metal coating on animal skulls. In this video, we're going to take these goat skulls and we are going to put some metal coating on them. We started by burying the skulls in dirt for about six months or so, and then we dug them up and we soaked them in water for 48 hours. And this tub will not be big enough just because the rack on one of the goats was uh, too large, so we could, went and put it into a bigger tote but we soaked it in just regular tap water for 48 hours and this is just me swapping tubs. I know there's a lot of ways to get what we'll call excess material off of the skulls. Um, I had done the berry technique before and so I felt most comfortable doing that. Uh, my understanding is that the beetles is probably a more useful way if you want to keep some of that uh, material in the nose cavity more intact but this is the route we went and after the 48 hour soak in water I went to the hydrogen peroxide and this is a 3% solution and I did 3 gallons of the hydrogen peroxide 3% to 2 gallons of water and I know you can go stronger as well I could have done 5 gallons of hydrogen peroxide but I didn't want to go too strong because I was going to be leaving these for a while. Uh, 72 hours is how long I let it soak for. And stronger concentration, you could have gone less. But we're, this is what worked for me. And so that's what I ran with. You don't need them pearly white in order for this process to work. As you can see, I'm just I'm mainly getting the dirt off and just letting it soak in to, to get them really clean and I could have left them in longer I could have probably gone a little shorter but this is what worked for me and I didn't bother pulling the teeth out I just decided early on I was gonna let the teeth do what they're going to do and I know that's a thing with the berry technique as well I have uh, lost a couple teeth already I have a few sitting at the bottom of the tub here and everything but I wasn't gonna worry too much about it um, ultimately I just figured I was gonna run with how it is. I know a lot of people will actually do the metal coating process where they actually take the teeth out, metal coat it, and then they'll put the teeth back in so the teeth are still kind of bone color and that's really cool. We're not going to do any of those advanced techniques here. We're just going to kind of a more get your feet wet kind of technique. And what we're doing here is we took a jawbone just to make sure that everything was clean, everything was going to adhere properly. You can see this had a uh, broke uh, part off and so I really wasn't going to use it. I'm only going to do top parts in this video uh, But I'm, I'm trying to show here that the teeth are loose And so I'm actually going to super glue those in place just to make it so they don't move But you can see it's scratch resistant. It mars a little bit, but it holds on really really well Most of the teeth actually stayed in place uh, out of the three skulls I think I only lost teeth in one of them and then another one had like a big chip in it but um, I think I used about half a tube of super glue on each of these skulls and I basically just tried to fill in where I saw the gaps just try to drip it in and I let it run down the side of the teeth I wasn't too careful with it trying not to let it pool or anything but trying to fill in where I saw bigger gaps and I wanted it to make sure that I got a good adhesion and ultimately I let it sit for about 24 hours and then came back and did the metal coating step but that also let me come back later on in the day make sure that the super glue had set up completely because this is not one that I used an activator on or anything this is just quick dry super glue and so I was able to make sure that it, all of the teeth were set really well before I moved forward 
Now, I know a lot of people like to use their whatever primer they can find on the uh, shelf there, and I would advise against it. There's something to be said about compatibility. I do like working with one product um, as far as knowing that they, they work, right, one company product line, and if you used like a Rust-Oleum already and everything like that, it's fine. It is what it is. But I would really recommend going with a primer. And I like to recommend going with a black, especially for kind of these skulls. And you can see it's a little harder to get in the nasal cavity. I'm trying to show how a regular guy or gal that has a skull and wants this done could do it at home without any spray equipment. And so I'm brushing this one out. And you can see it's a little harder to get into those deeper areas. So I'm going to use what is called a pre-valve system. And essentially, it's a crown sprayer that we sell. Uh, I think it's under $20 right now. And basically, it's just a compressed air can, and it makes it so you have a spray system at home. And it's really helpful in that sense. And they're reusable, so they're nice for that. So I'm just trying to get into all those cavities and make sure that I get a good coverage overall. You can absolutely brush this out 100%. Uh, and there would not be a problem, but it is definitely harder to get into those deeper areas. And the reason why I like going with a black primer for this is if there's anywhere you miss the metal coating, the black kind of just blends in really nicely. So you don't have to worry about getting all the bronze or copper, silver, whatever metal coating you go with deeper in. It is what it is and it'll be fine if you don't. For those of you who have a spray setup or maybe are looking to do this a little bit more professionally, um, the Harbor Freight Sprayer works really well for this, both for the primer and the metal coating. What I do is I dial the fan down so it actually is a much smaller, it, it sprays a little bit bigger than a quarter I would say, and uh, that way I can get deep into the nasal cavity really easily. And same with all those holes, even the in the back of the, the skull there, any of those I try and hit really direct and I do those first because if I have overspray and I go too heavy on the outside, I can always kind of wipe it off and fix it and go back and do an overspray where I expand the fan a little bit more. And that's what I'm doing here is just a, a, adjusting the dials just to get a finer spray pattern on the rest of the skull. So I go heavier where it's going to be darker and I don't mind if I kind of clump it up a little bit and don't get the smoothest texture. And then when I go to the outside, I try and spray out a little bit smoother. For those of you who are not familiar with the metal coating system, you do want to do two coats of the primer and you're going to want to do at least two coats of the metal coating, but we'll talk about more of that later. But I do at least two coats and especially I found on these horns, it was a lot more porous than I had expected. So I would actually do a little bit more focus on there just to make it so it doesn't soak in the patina on the um, in, in that area quite so much because I didn't get as good of a reaction. So I would probably pay a little bit more attention on the horns in my opinion. Now, when we go to the metal coating, and even for the primer, it's good to strain it as well, but I use these kitchen like flour sifter strainers, and that works really well just to get the clumps out of the gun. So we're going to start with the bronze B metal coating, and we're going to, I just spray this out, and then I realized that I was trying to show you guys how you could do this without all the spray equipment. So the first coat I do with the Bronze B and then realize that I wasn't supposed to spray this one. So I do brush it on the second coat uh, and show you that kind of stuff. But basically, I get questioned a lot, B version or C version. And what I normally tell people, especially when you're just getting into the, doing these skulls and everything, is go in with the B first. Figure out the system, figure out the process, find what you like. And then I do find that most people who are doing multiple skulls like this will switch from the B to the C. But I do like to kind of get your feet wet in that process first. So here you can see I'm going in with a sponge. It already had one coat. I do like to do two coats, um, a minimum of two coats for the bronze B. When we step up to the C, I do recommend doing more, especially for skulls because we tend to polish those a little bit more than if we were doing like panels or something like that. So I would recommend doing three to four coats of C. On the B, it's not as necessary because we don't pull and polish as much. It can't polish quite as much, and that's the big difference there. 
The B version is phenomenal for getting a great reaction, but the C variant we can polish and pull some of that green or blue or whatever patina you put on there off. So ultimately I'm just brushing on a little bit of this bronze B and I go back with a sponge. Um, the, the brush tends to leave some marks that I'm not a fan of. Um, and you can take a little bit more time than what I'm doing. And I'm just kind of stippling on in areas, trying to get it into those crevices and everything. But I think the sponge helps dilute a lot of that. So I don't see brush marks, which I'm a fan of. So I just brush it all out to get material on there fast. And then I go back and I sponge. And the hard part of doing it like this is you can see I'm painting my fingers and I'm going to distort some of the metal coating. So I might still hang it if you can. And that just makes it so you can get a better reaction all over the place. But ultimately, it's just about getting the material on there and getting the patina on there while it's wet. And that's another big question we get all the time is, when do you put the patina on? And the short answer is, as soon as possible. So while the metal coating is still wet, you put the patina on. If the metal coating starts to dry, then you're not going to get quite as good of a reaction. And this is our Tiffany green that I'm spraying on. So I'm going to get a nice greenish blue patina on here. And there's no harm in putting more patina on there. Typically, we spray more than we mean to. And that's not a problem. I usually just try and rotate the skull or something and get the excess off. Here, I'm just going to transfer to a different brick because this brick is soaking wet. And I don't want the skull to attach itself to the brick. But here you can see I've got a nice, beautiful reaction. There's nothing wrong with leaving it like this, but I didn't want quite so much. Again, I'm trying to show you a transition of what you might be able to do in the absence of using the C variant. And you can see I didn't get a full reaction on there because I didn't spray the green patina underneath the skull. And that's why. If I would have lifted it up and sprayed it, then I would have gotten it. But I'm taking a wet paper towel and then a wet brush, and I'm just pulling some of that patina off. And you can't use the steel wool on the B variant. That's the big difference there. But you can do little tricks like this to pull some of the excess patina off. And it kind of gives you that kind of weathered, not quite turned green, or maybe um, people have been touching it recently, so they've knocked that green patina off but it's still aged so it is a really nice effect and that's what i wanted to show here there's nothing wrong with trapping all the green in there but i like seeing some of that bronze coming through just to give a separate appearance it's, it's kind of like adding an extra layer to the piece so i'm just drying it off with paper towels and then once it's dry completely uh, I did wait till the end of the day just to make sure it is completely dry. Then I put the clear guard on and I use the EF matte, which normally holds those lighter green colors a little bit better. You can see now it's dry, uh, but I went on really heavy and uh, the, the trick to do that or the reason to do that really is to kind of darken the green a little bit more, almost like if you were using the Everclear or something along those lines. So if I went lighter, I would have held some of those lighter green colors, but I wanted that age, like just turning green kind of finish um, that I was really happy with when I did that. All right, so now it's time to step up to the bronze C. Reason why I went with the bronze variant is it is the most popular. It's kind of the classy look as far as a, a metal coating goes, just because that's the classical sculpture color, right? So we have the brass, the gold, the iron. We've, we've got a whole bunch of different options as far as making something look like a metal. And we are going to show a little bit of the silver as well. But I wanted to show the direct contrast between the B and the C. Now, again, the, I'm just going to spray out the C variant, and this is the third coat, and then we'll go on with the Tiffany green. And again, if I had known a little bit more forethought, I would have paid a little bit more attention on those horns. I would have gone a little thicker on the primer, but I would have also gone a little bit thicker on the metal coating because they are so porous, it just sucks the moisture out of it and makes it so the patina doesn't react quite as well as I wanted to. So we're gonna do the Tiffany green on this one as well, just to show you kind of the differences between the B and the C. And 
I ended up only spraying the Tiffany green on the top on this one again, just like I did on the B, but instead, after it's reacted 24 hours like it is now, I'm actually going to flip it over because you'll see that there's no reaction underneath, like on the palette, and I wanted to get that reaction. So what you can do is just come back in and put more on there. So I'm gonna take the bronze C and just basically paint it back on where I want more reaction. You can do this about 24 hours later. If it's colder where you're at, you may wanna wait a little bit longer just to get the Tiffany green to react fully. But where I'm at in the climate, 24 hours was completely fine. So I wait 24 hours, I kind of brush a little bit more on there where I want some green, and then I'm gonna spray the Tiffany green once more. Once I let that sit for about 24 hours, then I can come back and do some steel wool. And a lot of the times I'll let it sit 48 hours just to let it really fully react, but the top now has set for 48 hours and that was more than enough reaction for that, that I was happy going forward. Now you can go with one aught to two aught to three aught to four aught steel wool, and that's how you get the largest amount of kind of polish and shine. And it's important to note that it's not a reflective surface. We're not trying to get a mirror polish. It's just going to add kind of a, a shine to it, a polished material surface. And I don't actually like going one aught, two aught, three aught, four aught for me personally. A lot of the times I'll do two aught and then four aught and it helps save a lot of time. But for this, I just went with four aught steel wool. And the more I do this, the more I just do the four aught steel wool. I go a little slower, but I feel I have a better control on it. And I, honestly, I use a lot more steel wool this way as well. But again, I don't run the risk of polishing through it as often. If you go with the 2 aught and you go too much 2 aught, then at some point you're going to polish through. And that's the concern that you need to kind of watch for. And the the way you can mitigate that and really it, it like if it happens how you can fix it, a lot of the times I'll just go in with a little extra bronze C and try and do a little touch up. And that's often the easiest way. But I find again with if I just go with a 4 aught steel wool, it takes more time but I do like the effect it gives and I, I haven't had an issue polishing through and that that's just me personally, but I do find that it does help. You do need to be careful not to apply too much pressure to this. Um, you don't wanna kind of break off that nose cavity or anything like that. So do be careful with how hard you're pushing. It's more about just the repetition of doing it and then you'll eventually kind of start pulling through. And you can see I'm losing a lot of that green but through it is this beautiful kind of aged bronze look. And if you just get some of that green off, just like we did with the bronze B, you start seeing that aged bronze rather than a kind of fresh cast or newer looking bronze. When you're done polishing, it's important to kind of hose off uh, all the excess material. And I don't mean by water, although you could do it by water, but I just took an air hose to our air compressor and just hose it off real well that way and it worked it just gets all the dust off so you don't seal in any of that dust um, normally i do recommend doing a clear coat but this is something that i'm just going to put on my shelf and look at it and nobody's ever going to touch it so instead of sealing it in i just kind of left it as is and those greens were just as radiant as ever so if you want to seal it go for it but otherwise i think it'll be just fine because it's not something people really touch all that often so here we're going to go in with the silver C metal coating. And I can polish the silver C just like I did the bronze C. And in the end of this video, you'll see that I actually don't. I just leave it as is. And the silver C does not react with a patina. Um, it just doesn't react. So what we need to do is do a sort of faux finish. And the reason why I included the Silver Sea is it's one of my favorite, but I see a lot of people end up going this way as well. The silver kind of just gives it a cool look. I don't know if it's kind of a, like a darker side of things or instead of the opposite of classy bronze. It just, it's got a cool look to it. But you do need to add a little bit to it just to give it that depth and kind of make it even look better. So what I recommend is the black wax. And I have sped this portion of the video up just because it took a long time getting it on there. But essentially all I did was 
brush out all of this black wax. I got it everywhere and got it completely black and just let it sit for a few minutes. The longer you let it sit, the more black that will hold on. But ultimately I just let it sit and then I took a microfiber towel and I just kind of polished it all off as well. I've seen a lot of people use different color waxes to give a different appearance and that's all fine and dandy. I was trying to just kind of show some options and I really like how the black adds the depth to it. And I know a lot of people were saying I probably wasted a lot of wax. And yeah, I probably did. Probably didn't need to use quite as heavy of a layer as I, I did here. But I really, really like the effect here. And so I'm just trying to leave some of the black wax in the cracks in the skull, in the crevices, especially in the teeth, just to give that appearance. Uh, but I just kind of pulled it off. And you could take steel wool and then do the black wax, that's not a problem. But I wanted the kind of contrast between the silver and the black, but I didn't want a polished silver. So to each their own. And here we have our final pictures. We'll do a front, couple sides, and then the top down as well. But you can see here's our bronze B with the Tiffany green kind of pulled back with that towel. And you can see where some of that original bronze is wanting to come through, but a lot of it is just this kind of old kind of turning green look it's kind of cool and then here's the bronze C and of course we polished this one with the steel wool so we can see a lot more of that brighter bronze so it just depends on what you're really looking for if you want to polish get the C if you don't want to polish get the B and that's kind of the determining factor between the two of them honestly so uh, from the bronze C we'll go into the silver C and you could have gotten a very similar effect going with the silver B I went with the C so I had the option to polish but as you saw in the video, we did not do so. I thought it just looked really nice as it is and just didn't feel like I needed to polish it. So it turned out really nice with that black wax there. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out. But Primate, Metal Coatings, Tiffany Green, Black Wax, and ClearGuard are all available at www.sculptnouveau.com or by calling us at 760-432-8242.